like to introduce our keynote speaker for today. And it is my privilege to do so. Dr. Benjamin Weo is a is a passionate and prolific speaker. He's a trainer and facilitator with a firm belief in the power of words to change the world. As an award-winning inspirational speaker, two-time 2019 and 2020, West and Central African Champion of Public Speaking and finalist in the 2020 World Championship of Public Speaking. He is a proud member of Apo Hill Diamonds Club in Nigeria, West Africa, District 94. He loves family, children, speaking and connecting with people, spreading the message of power of finding our individual voices. He is also a veterinary surgeon and research scientist. Benjamin is married to Julia and is the father of two lovely children. Without further delay, I would like to introduce to you, Dr. Benjamin Bio, the power in we. Please help me welcome Benjamin. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Tricia, and a pleasure to be here today. Now, like she said earlier, we had, I have a very major tech problem that took away my presentation, but I am not going to allow anything dampen my excitement. So you guys can see my face, you can see my eyes, you can see my smile, you can see my hands, and you can see my balloon. <laughs> so I think we're good to go, and we're gonna have fun here today. Thank you so much. First of all, I'd like to share a little story that I learned or I read a few years back. It's the story of a man that sold balloons just like this one. Now, he was at a fair and any time that sales were low, he would fill some of the balloons with helium and let them fly just to attract more sales. And one of those days when he was leaving balloons to fly, a little boy watched him filling the balloons with different colors, red balloons, yellow balloons, white balloons, but he didn't see a black balloon. So he approached the man timidly and he asked him, he said, sir, do black or will black balloons fly? And the man immediately recognizing the puzzle in the boy's heart, looked down at him straight in the eye and he said, son, it's not their color, it's what they've got inside. Hello, Ohio. <laughs> Hello, District 10. It is indeed a great pleasure and honor again to be here. Now, I can't tell you how excited I am. I, I'm having palpitations. I am so excited to be in Ohio today. My mom tells me, that when I was a little boy, as a toddler, my first three words were, take me to Ohio. <laughs> Other than the fact that those are just four words and not three, I, I'm pretty sure you guys know that I'm lying. Those were not my first three words or four words or whatever. My first word was actually Toastmasters. And the second was Pathways. <laughs> All right, that's, 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 oh, somebody's still here laughing. Thank you so much. <laughs> it is a great pleasure, a great, great honor to be here. It is hot right here. It's about 32 degrees centigrade, I think about 24 degrees Fahrenheit. The humidity is high. We've had a little rain, but nothing can dampen my spirits. Now, last year in 2020, I had the singular privilege of competing in the same semifinal group with the beautiful, bubbly, and shiny Kitty Brando. Now, she had, she shared with us an unforgettable story 
about crunchy people, which has never left me. And her friendship, the respect, the mutual respect we have for each other, her kindness has helped bring me here today. And I am so grateful. A pleasure to be here and thank you, Kitty. Of course, in the last few weeks, I've had the pleasure of interacting with the distinguished Toastmasters, our program policy director, Alicia Speyer, and then Patricia Speyer, sorry, and then Alicia, and then Makisha. Rhymes, doesn't it? <laughs> and they have made me feel so comfortable. Thank you for making me so welcome here. I am already enjoying myself. I think I can smell Lake Airy already and all the wonderful cornfields. I think I can, I feel that welcome right now. And please don't mind me, I'm gonna talk about cornfields here and again, because we used to have a cornfield in my home. I just love corn. Anyway, that's by the way. So thank you so much. It is indeed a pleasure and always an honor. Now, I learned a lot about this place and your place and where you come from. And I also learned that some of your communities are about some of the most, some of the communities in your area are about the most diverse you can find anywhere. And that's beautiful. That's colorful. There's something about different ethnicities, different cultures, different backgrounds found in the same place. They just bring such rich beauty, spice to life. And I love it. There's this particular comedian called Trevor Noah. I don't know, some of you may know him. He's the host of The Daily Show. And he's actually South African, but he's now based in the US. Now he told a little story about his half brother who was trying to explain to his friend, his school buddy, why Trevor was a shade lighter than the rest of them. Now Trevor is half white, half black, or rather half Swiss, half Sosa South America, South Africa. Now his half brother was is fully black and so darker in shade. So he was trying to explain to his school buddy why Trevor was lighter than they were because he was about the only light guy in the neighborhood. And he said a very, very interesting, he used a very interesting illustration. He said, you see, there are different kinds of chocolate. He said there's dark chocolate, there's brown chocolate, there's cream chocolate, there's even white chocolate. But at the end of the day, they're all Nestle. We're all Nestle. <laughs> it's like saying that we're all different, different colors, but we're like different flavors and different colors in a box of M&Ms. Delicious. And I love children for those unique perspectives. Isn't it like children to have such beautiful and such wonderful perspectives? They tend to have a different mindset from the rest of us. They are able to see things a little bit differently. They are able to have more room in their hearts for joy than for pain. They have the uniqueness of being able to see things more positively than they do negatively. And this is one of the things I love so much about being a child. Now, I'm sure many of you can sense from, you can listen and hear my distinct African or West African or Nigerian accent right now. Yeah, but believe it or not, back home where I come from, right here, there are people that think that I actually have a perfect American accent. Can you believe that? That's strange. <laughs> now, I, it, it was so bad that there was a particular professor in university that once asked me, which state in the United States I had visited. I think he assumed that I studied in the United States, or United States or something like that. Or probably he heard about the first four words that I spoke as a child, I don't know. Anyway, he asked which state I'd been to and I said, I just chuckled and thought to myself and said, well, I've been to Sesame Street. <laughs> yeah, that's the only place in the US I've actually been to. So yes, folks, I can <laughs> show you all the way to Sesame Street. I can tell you how to get to Sesame Street. So even though I am from Nigeria, 
from West Africa, and I've been here all my life. Growing up as a child, I had the privilege of watching shows like Sesame Street, The Cosby Show, The Love Boat, Michael Jackson, and all kinds of movies and even commercials that came out of the United States, Europe, and different parts of the world. And those things, as diverse as they were, taught me about life and about people. Now, even though I had spent 99% of my lifetime right here in Nigeria, television, books, journals, and recently the internet has allowed me to be like a global citizen and has given me the opportunity to immerse myself in the cultures, in the attitudes, in the different lifestyles of people all over the world. And the COVID pandemic recently has helped us to actually integrate and come together much more than we used to. Cutting, cutting travel time and reducing so many things and allowing me and you, you and I, to be face to face learning from each other. And today I can say that I am indeed a global citizen. Now, while, while television can be a negative influence on young people, if it's done right, with right guidance, it can be a stabilizing force. It can be an educational tool. It can be a tool for integrating people and cultures. And television is fantastic. Uh, believe it or not, in Nigeria and Sub-Saharan Africa, it is set, it, this area is said to be the largest market for te television, the largest or rather the largest emerging market for television. And yes, we are watching you guys. <laughs> And you can watch us too. And that's the beauty of technology today. But the point is at the end of the day that these things have taught us that even though we are all different, even though we have distinct differences, what puts us together, what joins us together are more than what pulls us apart. I have seen continuously and consistently that though yes, we are different, our colors may be different, our languages may be different, but we all tend to speak the same language inside. There's a language inside that we all speak and is common to all of us. We all understand humor. We all speak love. We all are familiar with pain, with grief, with death. We all understand compassion. And it doesn't matter who we are, we still speak these same languages. Now, I've had the privilege of working with young people. And I do that most of the time in my spare time. And usually I work with, with kids, teenagers in, in school. And the project is usually aimed at encouraging them to stay in school. Now, the beauty of that whole event is we have a, the same MO anytime we enter into a school. We teach them, we give them educational materials, we share books and all kinds of stuff. But we also have a special time about 10 to 20 minutes where we make a presentation on a projector and we show them different individuals just like them. Sometimes from their communities, sometimes people around the world that they may or may not be familiar with. People that have similar challenges as they did who have, able, who have been able to make something out of their lives by having an education. And you need to see the light in these kids' eyes when they see the possibilities of they being able to overcome who they are or where they are to make something of their lives because someone else, they've been able to see someone else that has done the same thing. It's so beautiful. And more than anything else, it warms our hearts. You should see how excited we are when we get to hear about the changes in their performance in school and hear that they're getting better grades and doing better because of these encounters that we had with them. And believe it or not, despite the fact that you, you think, some people may think about Africa as one huge unit, but there are a lot of ethnicities, a lot of religions, different people. In fact, in my country, we have a host of festivals and cultures. 
So these children are actually from different backgrounds, different religions, different ethnicities, but they all understand success. When they hear those stories, they want that same success. And with the right motivation, those children, those same children are able to guide themselves to achieve that same success. So we may speak different languages. We may speak German, we may speak Hungarian, we may speak Spanish, but we all speak success. To varying degrees, we all understand and love success. Now, I'd like to have just a little exercise at this time. Can you just put in the chat box two things that you've learned from a child, something a child has taught you, just two things, two things. If it's too many, maybe you do, you do one. <laughs> if two is too many for you, you could do one, but I just like to see in the chat box what someone would say about what a child has taught you. Any child, it could be your child, it could be the child of, uh, it could be a little niece or nephew, it could be a grandchild, it could be your neighbor's naughty little boy. <laughs> you should look for the good in everyone. To be in the moment, truly present. Thank you, Christine, that's beautiful. Fearlessness and imagination, says Selena, beautiful. Treat others with respect and they will respect you. I love that. Stay curious. Incredible. All right. My sons have taught me patient. Yeah, being older doesn't make you right. Yeah, being childlike. Beautiful. 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 Any more? Patience, humility, presence. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right, I, the, 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 the entries are getting less, so. <laughs> now the beautiful thing, yeah, wants to try anything. Yeah, I love that. It's okay to express joy and happiness, even in a time of sorrow, yes. Fall, brush off, yes, and just move on. Playing with all, place also work. You guys are actually delving into some of the things I'm gonna talk about today, this is beautiful. Every Time is time for a hug. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Confidence and curiosity. Life, life. Look for greatness and love within yourself. I love this. Don't lose belief. I love that. Yes. All right, I'm, I'm, going, I'm, I'm going to continue with my presentation right now. Now you'll notice two things. Now it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your background is. We all have children. We may not have our children, but there's always a child somewhere. There's one young niece, nephew, neighbor. There's, there are always children in every society. And when you look into the eyes of those children, what you see is innocence, what you see is life, what you see is love, what you see is an open mind. And isn't it incredible that as smart as we think we are, as wise as we think we may be, as big, we think we know so much. We always have something we can learn from little children. That there's something about their heart and their perspective that continues to teach us things over and over again. This is a reality of life. And it doesn't matter what culture, what place. Sometimes when you don't know about people, when you don't know about where they come from, when you're prejudiced against people that are not from the same place as you are, you may label them and say, oh, these people are horrible, oh, these people are this and that. But do you know that those people also have children and those children have aspirations and those children have love and those children are teaching those people things just like they are teaching each and every one of us. And that's the beauty of life and something that we all share. It doesn't matter what background we are. We all have something that we can learn from children. And I'm gonna use that to close later on, something that we can learn from children. Now, I love this. While preparing, while preparing for this talk, I actually remembered a particular movie that I had watched a few, say a few months ago. Now, it was a beautiful movie. I've seen it for the first time. My wife and I had watched it for the first time. And I'd, it wasn't, it's not a new movie. It's probably like three or four years old. I'm not sure, but 
I actually thought that that movie was somewhere was based it was based on a true life story, but I thought it was somewhere in Ohio. And because I saw certain things that I had seen, I saw a closely knit community. I saw a love for the for their high school sports team. I saw some diversity. I also saw a lot of cornfields. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, that's Ohio. That must be Ohio. But and I, I, I even thought I heard the name Ohio in the movie, but it turns out I heard the name Iowa. Yeah. So it was Iowa and not Ohio. And you can't blame me an outsider for thinking that way. They both have two O's, I O W A. <laughs> That's another joke. Anyway, so this movie was actually called The Miracle Season. The Miracle Season is based on a true life story of a particular uh, volleyball team in this town or city, small town or city that had a very popular, very influential very fun loving volleyball team captain who tragically passed away through an accident. And the team had to overcome that adversity and overcome that challenge and still go on to be state champions in their state for volleyball, for volleyball. Now, that the particular part of the movie that got me more than anything else was the point where the sheriff was coming to tell the dad, the father of the girl, I think his name was Ernie Founds. It's based on a true life story. And the girl's name was Caroline, Caroline Founds. Beautiful story. Now he was coming to, to break the news to him that his daughter had died in a tragic accident. And at first the man wasn't getting it. But then when he, when he got the message, they were speaking, and, but he couldn't hear them. They were speaking and he couldn't hear them. And then eventually he couldn't even stand straight. He fell down or almost fell down. They had to hold him up. Now that was close to the time that we started watching the movie. And that was something my wife and I connected to and could not forget. Why? Because in 2014, my wife and I lost our first son. He was four years old. His name was Aldrin Nongan. And he was briefly ill and he passed away. It was horrible, but that was not the end. The nightmare wasn't over. 10 months later, his little brother, who was about three then, also fell ill briefly and also passed away. It was by far the most tragic thing that happened to myself individually, my wife, to, as a couple or as individuals. We had all lost someone in our lives, but that was the most painful thing that had ever happened to us. And yes, we also couldn't stand. People had to hold us up. Family, friends, and thank God for family and friends. People that look after you and care for you. But you see, the beautiful thing about that story and the reason why we connected with it was simple. Even though we weren't Caucasians, we've never been to America, we have never been to Iowa, and we didn't understand the culture or the intricacies of who they were or what they go through as individuals, we both, my wife and I, understand grief. We both understand death. We both understand loss and pain. And we felt the same thing that he was feeling at that time. And so the truth is, no matter how different we are, no matter our culture, our background, our color, the color of our skin, inside, we both understand pain. We all understand grief. We all understand death. But <laughs> the beauty of life is the ability to be able to move on. And I think that event taught me so many things. It made me question myself, my, my humanity, my time on earth. And it's one of the reasons why it made me face my number one gift, who I feel I think is my number one gift, my ability to speak. And that's one of the reasons why I'm a Toastmaster today. So sometimes great things can come, come out of horrible things. But that brings me to another story. A few years ago, the world was captured and enraptured by this story of 12 
boys and their soccer coach in Thailand who got trapped in a cave from rising tides. I'm sure someone can remember that story. It was worldwide news. And the reports say that there were over 10,000 people that were involved in that rescue. 10,000 people, hundreds of policemen, hundreds of soldiers, hundreds of volunteers from different parts of the world. Over 10,000 people trying to save just 12 boys and one man. In fact, one, at least one person lost his life trying to save them. Now, none of us, not all of us anyway, understand the Thai language or the Thai culture or even the reasons why they were there or where, or they may have been there or whatever the case. Some of us don't even understand soccer. We just hate soccer. We just love football. That's Ohio, America, yes, and baseball. But we all understand compassion. We all understand the love for our children. So despite the differences that we all have as people, we were able to come together to try to rescue those 12 boys and spend so much time, money, and resources just to save 12 boys because we all speak compassion. We all understand care. And it's a language that we all understand. And the story ended in a beautiful way. They were all saved. And the world got to celebrate coming together to do such a beautiful and wonderful thing. Because no matter what language we speak, no matter how different we are, there's something inside that we all speak the same. Now brings me to the next exercise. I'd like to ask another question. Can you please just put two things in the chat box, two things that you have been, two things that you've been able to conquer, um, adversity that you've been able to conquer, something you've been able to do, something you've been able to achieve, just two things. It can be one thing, it can be two things. All right? Just something you've been able to, adversity you've been able to conquer, something you've been able to achieve, something you've been able to overcome. Yeah, that's the word I've been looking for. Self-confidence, yes. Toastmasters is the center for self-confidence. Yes, another one. Adaptation, yes. The fear of speaking in front of a group. Yes, that's Toastmasters. Limiting beliefs. Uh, me too, limiting beliefs. Me too. Faith and determination. Alcoholism, beautiful. Learning Zoom and leadership. Mm, I'm still on that. <laughs> yeah. Leadership, yes. That's, that's, you have to hand it to Toastmasters. Leadership, 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 adversity. Conquered cancer with faith and divine intervention. I love that. Overcome fear. Yes. Teamwork. Yes. Love that. Procrastination. Tact. Yes. Going back to school and finishing my MBA, oh my God, I need to learn from you. Learning to ride a motorcycle, ah, love that. Helping others, survival after divorce, yes. Yes, all right. Now, before I make a comment on that, I'd like to say something else. I'd like to ask another question. Yeah, being my authentic self, I love that. Thank you, Bakisha. Now, can you put just, one thing or two things, encouraging others, yes. One thing or two things that you'd like to build into your character. Just one thing or two things that you personally would like to build into your character. So, trusting my gut, all right, thank you, Susan. Thank you. Confidence, trying to build more confidence, Trisha. Well, I don't know what Trish is doing with confidence, okay? Determination, courage. She seems to have more than enough of that. Personal discipline, balancing confidence. Yes, always finding the good in others. Beautiful. More confidence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Turning adversity into, into accomplishments. Balance. Learning to moonwalk. Woo! <laughs> the courage to say no. Yes, yes. Discipline of thought. Discipline of thoughts. Yes, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Fewer clock calories, ah, oh, me too. I have been wanting to have a six pack for a very long time. Listening to others with my ears. 
and my heart. Okay, yes, that's beautiful. Thank you, Joe. And time management, time management. Thank you. Helping others always believe in self and not worrying about others' opinions. I love this. Keep it coming. Believe in self. Yes, lessen self doubt. We all need that. We all need that. Yes. Okay, beautiful. Now, one of the reasons why I'm sharing this is that you'll understand and see, listening to hear what is not being said. Okay, I love that. So let me move on. No matter who we are, we all have overcome one form of adversity or the other. <laughs> There's no one that is free of adversity. No one is free of challenges. So despite their color, their creed, their ethnicity, their religion, their sexual orientation, their age, no matter who we are, we all face adversity. We all face adversity. And the beautiful thing is that we all have been able at one time or another found, find the tools to overcome that adversity. That means that we're really just the same. <laughs> that despite the differences that we see on the outside, it's just like the man said, it's not the color, it's what we've got inside. And we all are trying to get better. I mean, everyone here has put one thing or the other. It doesn't matter if it's as simple as, or as the moonwalk, losing calories, building more self-confidence. We are all trying to get better. It's the same language in each and every one of us. It doesn't matter what we speak. It doesn't matter what we understand, whether we understand Mandarin or Spanish or English or French. We all, we all want to get better. Deep down inside, we all want to get better and we're all speaking the same language. Now, I'd like to move to my last story. And this is a story I absolutely love. It's a love story and I love love stories. I'm a love junkie. My mama had, <laughs> my mama loved love stories. She had, anyway, let me not go there. So this particular Indian guy, now this is the, the Asian Indians, not the relatives of Pocahontas now, the, the Asian Indians, the ones in Asia. There was this Indian guy who was from a lower caste system, uh, from one of the lower castes. He was an artist and very gifted, and he was famous for being able to paint pictures or portraits in just about 10 minutes. So there was this Swedish lady came all the way from Europe through the popular hippie route of the day. This was in the 70s, some time back in the 70s. And she was a tourist in India. And she heard about this fellow and she went, okay, let me get a portrait in 10 minutes. And when she got the portrait, she wasn't impressed. It didn't look so good. And the guy tried to do it again, but she still wasn't impressed. Now, there was a reason why he, he wasn't working as well as he usually did. Love at first sight. <laughs> she was beautiful and he was captivated by her. But more than that, there was something about her that made him remember one of the predictions that his mama had made when he was still a boy, several times, just to encourage him whenever he was feeling bad. She said, from your zodiac sign, you, some of you, some of you know horoscopes and your, some of you, are, some of you don't, I don't do horoscopes, but th this is, this is incredible. She said, from your zodiac sign, you are going to marry a lady that's going to come from far away. Hmm? That's one. She's going to have the zodiac sign of Taurus. That's two. She is going to be musical, that's three. And then she's going to own a jungle, that's four. That sounds pretty specific to me, doesn't it? So when this guy saw this lady, obviously she was from far away and he was taken by her. I don't think she's the first European or white person he had seen or the first person from a far away place he had seen, but there was something about her. So he was curious to find out, could this be my dream girl? Could this be the one mama had been talking about ever since I was a boy? And so he was curious and he told her about it and they got to know each other and they fell in love. Can you believe it? This rich aristocrat European lady and this lower caste Indian guy fell in love. And he found out, yes, 
She was from far away. She was from Sweden. Her, yes, her zodiac sign was Taurus, accurate. She did own a jungle, <laughs> or rather a forest, being that she was quite a rich person. And she, was, she also played the piano, so she was musical. Pretty neat. Well, they fell in love, and for one reason or the other, she had to go back, of course, to her hometown, or rather her, her country. And he couldn't follow her immediately, but he promised to follow along. Now, I don't know the details why and all that, but the, the story just gets better and better for those of you that haven't heard it. And she, he, he, he didn't have enough money to travel like she did. And so he kept trying, but couldn't and decided he sold everything he had, all the money he could gather, and he bought himself a used bicycle. And when he bought that used bicycle, he cycled from India all the way to Europe, Sweden, all the way from India on a bicycle. And he did that in like five months, following the same BP route. Now, five months on a bicycle, I have never seen that kind of dedication. And I, I came close, maybe like, <laughs> as much as I love my wife, I've never done anything like that before. And that's so beautiful. And that moved me more than anything else. And, and funny enough, this is a true life story. The guy is still alive. He's about 70 years old today. They're still married with children and still very happy. Wonderful story. He said something that I have not been able to forget. He said, he doesn't understand why people say it's a big deal. That why do people think it's such a big deal for him to move all the way from India? As far as he was concerned, he hated cycling, but he loved the girl. So a man's got to do what a man's got to do. <laughs> and he did it. But the other thing he said that I have not been able to forget also, he said, love is a universal language that everybody understands. And even throughout his journey, what kept him going was the places, to he, the places he entered into, the people he met, and all the things he saw. And he, he saw people helping him out because of the love that he had for someone. Love is a universal language that everybody understands. And it doesn't matter who we are or where we come from, what our background is, what our color is, what our ethnicity, doesn't matter. We all understand love. We all speak that same language. We all seek to pursue it. Now, we may have had negative experiences that have changed our perspectives, but anytime it hits us, we all feel the same way about it. We all love, love. Now, this is the beauty and the wonderful thing and the reality about life, that we all, through time, carry a cocktail of emotions, of experiences, that determine how we feel about life, about people, about things. We all experience joy, excitement, care, compassion. We all speak that language. We all experience pain, grief, cruelty, death. These are things that we all go through as life, in life, as humans passing through life. And it doesn't matter who we are, we all go through them. But the beautiful thing is this, that even though we have these emotions, the reasons, the difference between one person and another is not the fact that they have had this emotion or that, is which emotion they hold on to. Which emotion do they hold on to? Which emotion do they choose to last in their hearts? And it is those emotions that determine whether they feel light inside or heavy inside. Now, there's several of us that have probably have seen my semifinal speech. And the first story I shared at the beginning was gotten, was the reason was how I framed that speech, what I framed that speech from. And isn't it wonderful that children are more attracted to balloons that fly than they are to the ones that fall down? There's something about negative emotions. Their reality, we all have them. But if we choose to hold them inside and to embrace them and to stay with them, those same emotions bring us down. They act as weights and make us feel depressed, 
and take us down to the ground. But if we hold on to the positive emotions, if we hold on to compassion, to care, to love, to understanding, it makes us lighter inside. We can see through the eyes of children who usually have more room for love than they have for hate, more room for compassion than they have for indifference, more room to change than to remain the same. That those emotions, those wonderful, positive, beautiful vibes and emotions can influence us if we choose to hold on to them and can help us soar. They can help us rise, each and every one of us. And that, my friends, is the power in we. It's that individual thing inside you, is that voice, is that emotion that each and every one of us share and the understanding that all of us have it, that we all have a measure of love, of understanding, of care, of experiences. And sometimes researchers have told us that all that experience, no matter who a person is, no matter how, how diverse they are, no matter where they come from, all of us have different understandings of life. That when we pull them all together, they're like shared meaning. They come into what they like to call the pool of meaning and allows us to understand each other better, allows us to be more efficient, allows us to be better at everything that we're doing. Because evidence continues to show that when communities, when organizations are more and more diverse, they are more efficient. They are more effective. They are more helpful. And so we all need to hear what is happening inside. We all need to have that safe space where we can hear our stories where we can see that each and every one of us share similar things in life. And that's one of the reasons why I love Toastmasters because we get to hear so many different voices and we continue to learn that despite we are, how different each and every one of us is, we are basically the same inside. So let's tap into the power of inside. And that is the power of we, we all, listening to each other, we all learning from each other, we all connecting with each other, with what's inside and not what's outside. Because if we focus on what's outside, we're going to lose perspective. And so what can we do? What can you and I do? Well, I think we can be like children. Yeah. I think we can learn from children because it is their mindset that helps us understand how to move forward. That innocence, that lack of prejudice, that clean slate, that joy, that excitement, we can learn from them. Now, it's not easy. It's definitely difficult and it will definitely take time, but it is possible. So there are a few things that I say you should do and I call this LOL, all right? L-O-L, of course, that's laugh out loud. <laughs> but in this, particular, in this particular case, it has a special meaning. Now, the first L means live a little, live a little. Be like a child, just enjoy life. Don't take yourself too seriously. Don't be that individual that just thinks, oh, everything is serious, everything must be done this way, bam, bam, bam. Don't be, don't take life too seriously. Be like a child. And in that carefree attitude, you're going to learn a lot about yourself. You're going to learn about others. You're going to learn that passion that they have. The next thing after the L, of course, is the O. The O there stands for optimism. And it is something that we see in each and every child. There's such a beauty. There's such a beauty in their perspective they are more optimistic than they are pessimistic. They have an open mind. Have an open mind, be more optimistic. Now, these things are not things that you can learn or adopt automatically. No, these are things that you've learned. That these are things that you've been able to unlearn over time, but whatever you can unlearn, you can also learn. 
expose yourself, have an open mind. Now, the last one, of course, is love and compassion. Yeah, be that person that seeks out love and compassion. These are some things, these are things that we can see easily with most children. Love and compassion. So that's LOL. Live a little, have an open mind, be optimistic. And of course, love, practice love and compassion. The key in these things is to immerse yourself and to practice it. It's not in automatically becoming it because nobody can do that. It's in practicing. It's immersing yourself. It's like me watching Sesame Street over and over again and having a little bit of an American accent because of that. When you immerse yourself in those beautiful things in laughter and love and passion and those wonderful things that children do, you also can become just like that and have a better perspective. And that is the end of my talk. And I'd like to say this as a final and closing that we all can let the voices be heard. There isn't anything that we can't do. And so let's open up our hearts. Let's open up our minds. Let's learn from where we are, from Toastmasters, and even get better. And let's continue to make sure that every voice counts wherever we are. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, everyone, I, I'm going to ask everyone to turn on their camera and give Dr. Vio, Benjamin Weil, an uh, excellent clap, round of applause on camera because of his great work that he done. Unmute yourself, because if you haven't found the power in we, what are we doing here, right? Great job. All right, I'm going to open the floor for a couple questions um, to Dr. Weil that you may have. You can send it to direct message to me. I did get I do have one and I did get one already. Um, Dr. Wild, thank you again yeah. uh, for letting us or walking us through the power in we and also the LOL, which I plan to use that. I love yeah. little synonyms. So the question that I have while I'm waiting on ones for other is, you talked about the losing of your first two born kids, your wife and you. Most, when, most with death, and I have experience because I lost both of my sisters, older and younger, it separates family. How did you and your wife find the power in we to actually bring together, stay together and continue to move forward to have more amazing kids? Yeah, yes. And you, you could not be more correct in saying that. That singular event almost tore my family apart. Now, my wife and I are extremely in love with each other. We, how we got married is, is, a, is a story on its own, but the loss of my two boys, we, we almost got separated was so painful and it was horrible. But I think more than anything else, it is, first of all, my faith in God, even though it was shaken, even though it was painful, even though it was difficult, there was just something inside that kept encouraging me and kept moving on. And secondly, of course, the people that I had around me, I had so many friends, family, loved ones that kept looking out for us, that kept asking us. In fact, I actually moved cities from one place, from, from my home city to another, closer to a few friends and family so that we could be away from the grief and the old, the old home, you know, and everything that, so people just came together, encouraged us and moved us. And of course, finding Toastmasters. <laughs> yeah, that was one of it. Uh, I, 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 had, I had heard of Toastmasters before, but somehow I'd never really, connected and I, I think I didn't believe I didn't know it was it was in my city but when I did and I questioned myself I looked at myself I said what am I doing with my life what am I doing with my strengths with my abilities with my talents and my gifts and I said I, I love I love my job I love veterinary medicine I love animals and all that and but I love to speak if there's anything I would do for free over and over again is speaking so <laughs> Finding Toastmasters gave me that, that room to just grow and be a better speaker and share my story, share my experiences. And it has helped so many people. People have told me how my stories, my experiences have helped them. And I, I just keep going and going and going. And so that, that, I would say those are the three things that have helped me among other things, yeah. 
All sure. right. All right. So then I have another question that did come through the chat and I wrote it down earlier. Someone wants to know what are some tools that we can use to overcome adversity, especially now in today's world? We talk a lot about adversity, but I think what may, and I'm, and I'm adding on to the person question, what may be the most challenging is most people don't know what the tools are to actually overcome adversity. So do you want to provide us with some tools that can help with adversity? Yeah, I, I think there, there are certain things that work everywhere and every time. One of the easiest things, of course, is having a community, a safe place where you can share your heart, your mind, people that you can talk to, someone, it could be a professional, it could be a friend, usually friends, loved ones, people that care about you for you. That, 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 that safe space where you can share your heart, where you can grieve, where you can cry, where you can get encouragement, that is very important. That always helps in being able to overcome adversity because we are relational beings. We always need to relate with something, with someone. It could be a pet, it could be a person, it could be a child, it could be a relative, it could be friends, it could be a father that we haven't even spoken to in a while because of how we didn't understand or misunderstood each other. But the point is, if you can have someone, some people, a group, a community, your church, it could be your therapists, people, you need to be able to relate, relate with people. It really helps in overcoming adversity. Now, the second thing for me is being able to have accurate information. Accurate information about yourself, about what you're going through, about what you're trying to overcome. Because human beings, the way we are, when we get the right information, sometimes nobody needs to tell us do this. We are automatically going to be able to overcome something. I remember one of my mentors said she learned about the imposter syndrome. The imposter syndrome is when you feel you, you land in a place, you maybe you achieve something or you are able to get a particular position or something, and then you feel like, oh, I don't really belong here. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I shouldn't be here. And she didn't know that there was anything called the imposter syndrome. And she felt that for a long time. And she was successful, but she felt like she was in the wrong place. But when she heard about it, I just heard there's something called the imposter syndrome. I said, oh, it's a syndrome? Oh, I ain't having this no more. <laughs> she let go of that forever. She said, I'm fit. I'm beautiful. I got this. I'm supposed to be here. So when we get accurate information about ourselves, about what we're going through, we're able to overcome the adversity that we're going through. Ah, uh, I think I'd stop there. That, that should really help. No, that was awesome. So I hope you're able to stick around and join us for the rest of our program as you watch us demonstrate the power in we, and we yes. try to live out the LOL model that you have in place and instilled in all of us. So hopefully you'll stay around. And again, everyone, please take yourself off mute, come on camera, and let's clap it up for Dr. Benjamin Weil, who gave us a phenomenal presentation on the power in we.